Um, our next speaker is going to be really happy to see you guys checking in on your G Summit app uh, as the dopamine agency actually developed it. And um, please welcome Mike Martocha, founder of Dopamine Agency. Hi, everybody. Long day at conference already, huh? It's hot. You guys have been in the same room for a long time. Can everybody hear me in the back? Great. Thanks, Jesse, for the introduction. As she said, Mike Martosa, that's my Twitter handle, and I'm sure you all are playing the meme cube game. Have you all checked in? Can we get over 50? We can get over 50, yeah. Are we over 50 in this room right now? All right, let's get to 50. So, um, gaming with the crowd. This is a fun concept, you know? You guys have spent a lot of time understanding what gamification is, and I'm sure you're familiar with this concept. This is one of Gabe uses all the time. Gamification is a process of using game thinking and mechanics to engage users. How many here know what crowdsourcing is? Oh, fantastic. Then this will be familiar to you guys as well. Crowdsourcing is taking a function such as folding proteins. I know Seth's in the audience, probably in the back somewhere or applications or small micro tasks, sourcing it to a large audience or a crowd, usually a crowd you don't know and is unnamed and is not familiar potentially with your concepts, and then putting it out into an open call format. Open call format, remember that. How many people know who Sir Francis Galton is? One, just one, anybody else? All right, Sir Francis Galton thought the crowds were completely mad. They were a mob, and they uh, were full of two ideas, lacked intelligence, and were prone to delusions, right? So he would often run these type of quizzes, usually in a farming community where they, uh, crowd would try to weigh or guess the weight of ox, and they found out that through the crowd, even through, based on, yeah, let me reset. Through the crowd, when they would average together, it would be more accurate than any one person. Here we are. When guessing the weight of an ox, the average of the crowd's guesses was more accurate than any one individual. So collectively, through crowds, you're able to get a more accurate, defined solution or answer. Now this is way back, you know, 1800s. Let's fast forward. Not to the present, but to 1984, when summer was awesome. You guys might remember 1984. It was one of my favorite movies. Greetings, Starfighter. You have been recruited by the Star League to defend the frontier against Sur and the Kodan Armada. Hello. Excuse me, son. Can you tell me the name of the person who broke the record on that game over there, where I might find him? Alex Rogan. You're looking at him. Alex Rogan, <laughs> Who are you? Centauri's the name. I invented Starfighter, which is why I'm here. He's got a little proposition for you. Are you interested? I guess. Ha <laughs> ha Hey! Where are we? Welcome to Rylos, my boy. You mean like in a game? You may have thought it was a game, but it was also a test. Send out across the universe to find those with the gift to be starfighters. Star Navigator First Class Greg, you your service, sir. <laughs> Stop us now. Starfighters, you and you alone stand between us and the black terror of the Kodan. Victory, Victory or death! Victory or death! The lasers, photon bolts, and the particle Hey, wait a minute, this is just like back home. <laughs> Now oh, face it, Alex. You're a born starfighter. There's no fleet, no starfighters, no plan. One ship, you, me, and that's it. I'm a kid from a trailer park. If that's what you think, then that's all you'll ever be. Maybe there is a starfighter left. <laughs>
you guys get the concept, right? It was a game that was created to find and identify the best pilots in the universe to more or less defend and against the Kodan Armada. I mean, that's really no different than some of the things we have today. Look in the lower right. We got comp competition platforms for crowdsourcing. This is where a large audience, a crowd per se, goes against other competitors in the same kind of interest, whether it be design, development, video creation, what have you, to be the best, to be the starfighter. This was 1984. But now, with the technology that we have available today, we are now able to kind of create these simulations, these games that actually train people to do things in real life. Isn't that interesting? For example, fold it. Now, granted, it doesn't take a lot of knowledge to know how to fold proteins. You can go through and learn and understand what needs to happen, and the human mind is great at doing that. But what makes this fun is that it's a game, and you are actually doing scientific work. Seth's in the audience. You probably heard him talk about this at ENDS earlier today, and I won't spend a whole lot of time on it. CNN, they've created a game. You go through and I report. Look at all the information at the top, that the metrics, the scoring. These are all important information that lets you know of how you are doing based on your game, right? All very similar game mechanics. Double Fine Adventure, million dollars, fantastic. Kickstarter, another thing, another game. You know, how many backers? What's the pledge? What are the types of missions and challenges that you get to achieve as you go through that process? XPRIZE, another familiar one. And then Stack Overflow. Answers, votes, views, leaderboards, points, scores. We don't need to go into this. You guys are familiar with it already today. But these are all crowdsourcing type solutions that are either centered around development, design, answers, questions, and it's all leveraging the crowd to do it. All of it, of which, the genesis being gamification. Who am I? I'm Mike. I guess you guys have probably seen me around the conference. I come from this place. Have you guys seen potatoes? Have you seen potatoes this big? I have. But I left Idaho so I could taste all the potatoes that get exported, and they're fantastic. I spent a lot of time doing this growing up, and a lot of this. Do you guys know what this is? D&D. Right. &D. And I live in DC now, where I spent time doing work at this company. Anybody heard of Top Coder? OK, a couple of you. So Top Coder is a competitive application development platform where they do creative design as well as application design. But not just that. They do collegiate challenges, and they also do things called algorithm challenges, and all of which is run by these competitions that are driven for metrics, numbers, percentages, times, scores, com competitions across the entire globe amongst other fellow competitors. Look at Peter. That score that's in red at the very top for algorithm rating, he's one of the best there. He's been a member since 2004. He's out of Russia. But you can see through his entire career, what his performance has been. And of course, the most being in 2011, at 3923. So these are algorithm challenges. We do rating systems, rating distributions, where he is amongst everybody else. Of course, he's fantastic, so he's on the far right. And then they compete to earn a specific access. And the access is called the Top Coder Open. This is where the world's best algorithm developers, programmers, designers come to compete live in Las Vegas, sometimes in Orlando, and they get to compete with those who are the best. This is that access side of things. Of course, they get monetary compensation for competing and completing projects, and also completing the projects that are more mission-oriented. But they're all really wanting status. They all want status within their community. They want to be part of the Top Coder Open. Status, access, power, and stuff. Status within the community, they want to be the best. They want to be the best in that specific competition format that they're doing. Access, not all competitions are available to everybody who tries. Some of the more advanced, more difficult you know, technologies are only available to those who score well. Power, at Top Coder, there is a review process that happens with each form of competition. It, 
you compete and you compete well, you become a reviewer and you get to review each submission. Each submission gets three reviewers. And those who score high get to move on to the next challenge. But that's the power. Being one of those reviewers to say yay or nay that you pass, that's what you are more or less given as you compete. You prove yourself well. Stuff, besides dopamine, this is the things we kind of gave away, whether it be shirts, access to events, or that to the TCO, more stuff. Interesting. How many here have heard of Code Academy? So a lot of the people that are now at Top Coder started here, kind of like a game for Starfighter, to be able to compete and win and be those Starfighters for Top Coder. And Code Academy is a great place to learn and understand that software development. I spend a lot of time here, just like Gabe, up in New York. I work for a company called Dopamine. We do fun, engaging opportunities. We do this. You guys have probably seen this. I don't know if you guys have seen Social Media Week, but we created this live infographic that more or less created all the various metrics that drove the entire day's events across the entire world. Um, this is, of course, the uh, ending totals that we got from a result. That was a lot of fun. And of course, you guys are playing now, right? Are we at 50 yet or above? 65. Fantastic. How many tweets? Good numbers. What about retweets? Fantastic. All right. These are some of our clients, of course. But let's go back to the spinning cow. So, as I discussed, you know, there are some core components that are necessary to game with the crowd. Of course, you need to have an audience or a crowd to be able to pull from. Um, that usually takes some form of incentive. Um, they just don't come initially for points unless the points are actually something worth attaining to as a result. With Top Coder, we spent gobs and gobs of money to build a community, and it was probably not the right thing to do. Um, going through and designing a point space system early in 2000 would have probably been more effective. So that's a lesson learned that we went through. And then also, too, in terms of creating competitions, you want to make sure that you're very clear as to what the objectives are, what needs to be done, and what type of skill sets are going to re be required to do so. And then also, the rules need to be very specific and clear. But besides that, launch your projects, launch your competitions, gain momentum, share it with the world, and get things started. So with that, I leave you with Gaming the Crowd. Thanks. Thanks, Mike.